I am with, in uh, London, England now. Jonathan Comerford here. Comerford here. Comerford mm. here. Um, hey, Cape hey. Town raised uh, artist, printmaker, living in London for some years now. Yeah. We met at uh, Peacock Print Center in Aberdeen, Scotland, 1987, and he's uh, he's working on uh, some lino cuts here. I'm, was invited by him to uh, do a new lino cut. I haven't yet begun drawing, but I showed him uh, these proofs I had here of uh, the lino cut I did last year. Uh, I actually drew it a long time ago, but I didn't cut it till last year of Robert Desnoe, the French surrealist poet and anti-Nazi resistance artist. You have some feedback on the imagery here. But yeah, yeah, like I was saying, Ken, it's the key base that um, Having known your work for so many years, uh -huh. in terms of what you put into it, um, in relation to not only print but text and story, storyline, uh -huh. the initial view of, of, from my point of view, um, in looking at your work initially, it looks very busy and there's everything all over the place and there's ways in which one can look around the work in it and through. But initially, it's just sort of a a real mishmash of so-called images and text and writing. But the more when speaking to you, like enlightening me about this, this, this surrealist poet who, who died in the Holocaust, immediately the image starts appearing. Uh -huh. And your pieces start then being, uh, coming into context. Whereas initially, I think for most people, your work's very busy and you've got lots of things going on. Um, and underlying layers of, 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 of text and, and images uh -huh. that now, as I was saying to you earlier on, the more I look at the work um, and in discussion to the way you cut it, mm -hmm. you, you have a particular style of cutting in relation to the drawing. Uh -huh. The figure starts appearing much more readily. Yeah, I'm going to just cover this to give it, leave that out. That's so to get the, uh, um, whereas at first I just saw a whole, a lot of these textured pieces, the stars, the, the, the lightning bolts, uh, the movement were kind of overpowered, but then the figure slowly starts appearing. Uh -huh. Look at the work. Huh. All right. I think one that goes into the text, which I, I've, always, I've always known your work about, mm -hmm. is always having this amazing text and storyline around the piece, uh -huh. which is very unique, yeah, you know. Um, that inscription there, yeah. So, I think, uh, yeah, we're going to make an amazing piece over the next day or two as part of the Hargram Printmaker Sans Frontiers liner cut. Uh -huh. London collaborative portfolio. Okay. Which is A3. And I think, yeah, I think it, it's really about getting the drawing down and us talking and, and, and me providing some insight and knowledge of maybe technical things or encouragement essentially mm -hmm. that's at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So uh, to make a unique piece. Yeah. Uh, very good, thanks. Uh, viewers might think that Jonathan is an MOT, but he's actually not an MOT, even no. though even though he has this kippah on. Yes. But uh, um, a, so, so his initial, if I were to redo, like for a Saturday night skit, his his uh, initial observation about it being busy, it's like he looked at it and he said, Oi, vey, fuss is oy das. Vey, yes. What is this? Oi, gewalt. Oi, gewalt. <laughs> what is a kiva up to now? <laughs> <laughs> right, there, there we have it, folks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ta, as they say here. These um, nutty Brits here. Germany was alive at liberation at a camp in Czechoslovakia, 1945. He was born in 1900. But he died at age 45, like 17 years younger than I am now. And uh, he, he was very famous in Europe between the wars as a surrealist poet and wrote radio commercials. <coughs> and in lieu of bird's wings, because he was a surrealist poet, I decided to do these things which for me evoked kind of um, surrealism. The I, three images I pulled out of old sketchbooks, including this one here, I had uh, drawn uh, landscape from the bus between St. Andrews and Aberdeen back know, all those years back. Next image, please. Uh, a French Jewish child who was in an orphanage, um, and uh, 44 children and about four or five teachers were arrested in 1944, late in the war. Most of them were deported to Auschwitz where they were murdered. Uh, his name was Joseph Goldberg. He was around 12 or so. I uh, saw a black and white photo he did of a 
a, he did a drawing, which I saw a black and white photo of, of a cowboy on a horse, which I uh, reinterpreted into my drawing. This girl here was, looked to me about 11 or 12 years old. She was uh, a first cousin of a Holocaust survivor I know in the States who lived in my mom's building for many years. The survivor herself was called a, a hidden child survivor. She posed as a Catholic, as did her brother in a school in France, and both survived the war. She gave me photographs of her aunt and uncle and a boy and a girl cousin who were in Paris. They were rounded up in 1942 and sent to Auschwitz. Next image, please. Um, I'm going to show you, I think, four images um, that I used for the next drawing, which when the drawings began really changing about 1999. Uh, chicken from a book called Extraordinary Chickens, Chickens from Bremen, a uh, city in Germany. We have a Nazi, uh, uh, infamous anti-Semitic, that's the hatred of Jews, um, newspaper, like tabloid, called Der Stürmer, The Storm, um, which was printed throughout the years of the Third Reich solely to attack Jews. The Jews are our misfortune on the bottom here. Ugly portrayal of a Jew, Jewish man here. Oh, it says the Satan. The Jew is the devil. Next image, please. We have, uh, this is, uh, I bought this.